it's funny because um, when I was in college, this is nineteen mid nineteen eighties. My high school had been devastated by Proposition Two and a Half. I was a big fan of Paul Songus and Michael Dukakis, and I don't think my politics were. I think I was as influenced by the perception that Massachusetts were liberal on across the board as anything else. And I, you know, it's only until later, um, and some of uh, I think this book instructed me at least in terms of Dukakis. I was. Uh, I'm more recently aware or more or earlier aware of of this about Songus is that these guys were the sort of the precursors to the DLC in many respect. And it was very much about sort of technocratic solutions and very uh, deficit oriented and uh, fiscal responsibility, that type of stuff that I don't know that I had the savviness um, uh, as a kid to understand what the implications were. It was just like, I, you know, Proposition 2.5 comes in, and it, you just assume it just sort of... I mean, it was voted on a referendum, right? But it's not... I don't have a sense of how it was sold to the Massachusetts public, but I just remember it was like, oh, there's no extracurriculars at my high school. Like, there's no... There's math and science and... English and foreign language and that like there was no I honestly don't even think I had heard the word philosophy as like a study until I went to college like I don't it, I mean I think people have that in high school but it wasn't our high school was not like that what I'm wondering though because you asked about the future trend and I, I think she's probably right that there is this group, and I obviously pretty familiar with this group of voters and how they think about things from just like where I grew up and different social circles and stuff. But I think on the other hand, that type of voters definitely in New York, they broke for Bill de Blasio. They definitely seem like there's certain chunks within that coalition that is more interested in at least the possibility of discussing the economic injustice and the inequality questions. So I kind of wonder actually if you might see that coalition start to not exactly break apart because there's still enough overlap, but I think there's disagreements with inside that. I think it has to do with, frankly, um, the, the perception that there's a generation, <laughs> my age, I think, and younger, um, that they're not going to do as well as their parents, largely speaking. Right. And that it's consistent with the sort of M.O. of those people, right? I moved to the suburbs. I'm more concerned about my kids, um, you know, the quality of my kids' uh, school, uh, which remains, but it's also sort of because you're living in those type of suburbs, the solution is pretty straightforward to maintain the quality of that education, right? There's not a lot of nuance involved in that. Um, you, you, you're in a, a much more isolated situation. Now, um, if the, the next generation moves to the sort of the gentrified urban areas, it's, you're just not quite as isolated, and um, it, it, the, the solutions to that become a little bit more nuanced, like maybe I actually have to get more involved in my kids' schools, and uh, maybe it's just going to involve a slightly different type of, of lifestyle. I, I don't know. I mean, it's hard to sort of separate these things out, but I know, I mean, Worcester was not a suburb um, by any stretch of the imagination, but also it's not like... It's not uh, a city it's not like Brooklyn. Like Brooklyn. Um, but, you know, it was, there were four, well, there was a lot more elementary schools, but there were four high schools, and there was no, like, you just went to the one that you go to. There was no, uh, there was no, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I, my, my I'm just, perspective is a little bit tainted because I'm, 
in you know greater New York City. No, and but I'm just wondering because I I see like I could almost see three directions of the type of voter that she's talking about going in because I think some of those people have almost just become Republicans. Some of those people have have gone in straight. Massachusetts. In, certain, in Massachusetts, I would probably I would say some people in Silicon Valley and in California have gone in the kind of libertarian thing. I think some of those voters, not a majority, but some, and I think she's right. There's a large group that really are like the Obama Clinton type. Mm-hmm. And then I think you saw, like you're saying, with de Blasio, maybe people dealing with more interdependence in urban areas, there's some recognition that, you know, that you got to deal with inequality and that that is at the heart of any type of concern of injustice or the environment or quality of life, in fact. And it makes a lot of sense, I guess, if you live in an urban environment, that that's just kind of more apparent to you. But I, I wonder if there's that kind of grouping is a little bit softer, uh, in the future, and it might be splitting up in some ways. I don't know. It's interesting. We'll find out, I think. Maybe. Hopefully.